Welcome to the Peggy Smedley Show, the podcasting voice of IoT and digital transformation with your host, Peggy Smedley. Welcome back to the Peggy Smedley Show. We are coming to you live from the PTC, which is here at ThingWorks, and it has been great. Jim, I am so excited to have you here. We have Jim Heppelman, the CEO of ThingWorks, and PTC, all these things. I guess I should say it is PTC. I want to, I mean, my yep. gut says PTC. thing works, but you know, <laughs> it's so long since I've known you so long and uh, it's exciting. You know what? You were on stage yesterday. It, you just riled and got everybody fired up. How good does it feel to see where you've come here? Yeah, well, I mean, this uh, event, LiveWorks, is fantastic because uh, it has grown so much. And, uh, you know, I get, the, uh, I get the audience riled up because I'm riled up. You know, I'm excited about this technology, and I just try to pass that on. And, uh, and I think I've, uh, you know, gotten okay at that. And uh, Okay, you are amazing <laughs> at it. I have to tell you, you're like a rock star. You are a rock star. You know, I was thinking about it. The last time I had you on my radio show was back, I think, in 2014. That's way too long. I mean, yeah, it's been yeah. way too long, but that's how long you and I have, have known each other and have talked about. But I'm thinking this show floor is amazing. You have to feel really good because you've done an amazing thing where I think not a lot of CEOs have done, have been able to define an industry and make it your own. Because what you've done in the IOT, you have to feel really good. Because I think when you and I were first talking about the internet of things, people were first trying to figure it out. Yeah. You've now taken the IOT and said, it's not just the IOT, it's CAD, it's PLM, it's AI, it's VR. And now you said, look, it's digital thread. It is now a whole digital transformation. And people are getting it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we've made a lot of progress. Um, <laughs> We have been able to show the world how all of our heritage actually is a point of leverage, you know, as we move into a bigger story of uh, digital transformation. So we're a, we're a company who did CAD and PLM for decades, and suddenly CAD and PLM plays a very key role in IoT and AR and VR and AI and, you know, all these transformative technologies. So I think, you know, probably at this show, I did the best job so far of showing that connection and I think a lot of light bulbs went on. Light bulbs, I think every light bulb went off because I was, my, my first question was going to be, I had it in my head, I was preparing for the show and I was gonna say, Jim, I want you to describe what digital transformation is. And, and I don't think you had to because you did it on stage that everybody's getting it. And people have been asking me when I write articles, what is digital transformation? But you really helped people understand it. So for those who might be watching today, because we're live streaming, help them who weren't here on stage who didn't, although I think a lot of people did, help people who still might not be getting it. I, I think they are getting it. What, what in your mind made you decide to pull it all together? Because you're a PLM guy at heart. And <laughs> we were talking about this at the, at the media press conference. You know, that's where your first love comes from. And but help everyone understand why you decided to bring everything together into that whole digital thread. Yeah, well, uh, funny enough, before I was a PLM guy, I was a CAD guy too, so. Uh, no, I mean, if you, if you think of my keynote address, uh, first of all, for your viewers to know, uh, you know, I used this, a uh, couple of customer examples actually, but I used uh, Volvo truck is one of the main ones. And we started by showing how they use uh, AI, artificial intelligence, in the engineering process to generate designs for them. And we generated some new truck components. And then we showed how we used uh, high performance computing and real time simulation to make tweaks to those designs. And then I, I explained a little bit that, okay, now we have a new design. That means we have a new configuration. So how are we going to explain to the factory how to make yet another configuration? So we went through some, uh, some factory planning software processes. And, uh, and then we flowed that information down to the factory and we showed smart work instructions that were configuring themselves uh, for serial number by serial number engine, but also um, smart instructions in the sense that they were programming the tools. For example, she was, uh, you might remember, Jordan was using some, uh, you know, basically power tools. And we were programming the torque into the power tools, uh, but then also recording the application of torque to each fastener in the engine, you know, as part of the part of the MES record of that engine, if you will. And then we used augmented reality 
as a uh, quality check. Uh, so, you know, we went from AI inside of CAD to high performance computing and real time simulation over to PLM and configuration management, introduced that concept of digital thread. Then we picked it up with IoT in the factory and smart work instructions and then augmented reality. And I think people just said, wow, that all that technology works. And I see that, you know, a company like Volvo uses it. And I can see how different that process is. You know, I went on to others from there and I'll, I'll spare you for the moment, but, um, but I think the key thing was to show all this technology in the context of a real customer use case with real customer products sitting right there, you know, as we talked about it. But that was impressive, Jim, because I think that whole demonstration, unless you were there to see it, I don't think most people recognize, and I was saying this to Kate when she, uh, K Catherine, when I should say, when she was here, didn't really understand the significance of that because the detail on that isn't something you can easily do, yeah. but now you can. I mean, it's something over time that we are really seeing the technology advance and, that, and to be able to do that on a Volvo truck and to so easily do it was what was so impressive. Yeah, and, and you know, I brought some uh, Volvo guys on stage and we talked about it a little bit, but I think the key thing for your viewers to know is that last year Volvo made 260,000 trucks in almost 260,000 configurations. So what I was talking about is how would smart work instructions be configuration managed? Because every day, every next job is different than the last one. So IOT is great, but if you can't give me the right instructions and program the right torque into the right fasteners, what's the point of it? So I think, uh, I think what's really great actually in our vision is how we've kept everything integrated together and how we can bring the power of uh, configuration management, which is a PLM concept, down to IoT and uh, in, into augmented reality. You know, because the augmented reality quality check instructions also have to match the configuration of the engine. So uh, we've been working on that stuff with Volvo actually for years and you know, it was a proud moment for Volvo that they got to show it off uh, here at LiveWorks. So when you look at LiveWorks right now and you see how big it is, when you get on stage, people have just are in awe and saying how big <laughs> and the, 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 the show that you put on here. But I think it's exciting because you say the digital transformation, the performance that you show everybody shows the power of what can be. And I yeah. think that's what I like about what you're seeing here is you're letting one, everyone know that the technology is transforming so quickly yeah. and that we're only limited by our imaginations. Yeah. And I think that's what you're saying, whether it starts from CAD, where you started, you say you're a CAD guy first, but all the way now to digital transformation and where we're headed, and it just says, where are we headed? I yeah. mean, where do you really think this can go? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're certainly moving fast. I, let me first agree with you on that. I mean, I don't even know where we're headed. I just know Oh, that yes, you do. <laughs> you have it, the secret. <laughs> You're just not telling us what the secret yeah, sauce I mean, is. I, I, certainly, I certainly can imagine maybe the near-term and the mid-term future, but I think when you look out beyond that, you know, we talked, for example, in the keynote about additive manufacturing. And uh, additive manufacturing is still in a very nascent phase but it is going to take off. And, uh, and we're going to have factories which are just buildings full of, of printers, more or less, you know, before too long. And uh, so I just think all these technologies, whether it's uh, CAD and PLM, of course, or IoT and uh, AI, you know, artificial intelligence, or uh, AR and VR and computer vision, like I was giving many examples of, you know, 3D manufacturing, you know, additive manufacturing, 3D printing. Uh, there's just so many things happening that to try to understand all the intersections and exactly where that'll be in 10 years uh, is a little hard to predict, but what's clear is the world is changing fast. And uh, I think companies that are resting on their laurels, you know, are going to be in trouble. Are you surprised in some ways about the speed to which it ha has happened or in some ways how slow in other areas it's happened? Because I think there's some manufacturers who haven't really done enough and others who have really taken the leap and embraced technology yeah. in a way that you've really been pleased to see what they've done. Yeah, I mean, I think the technology is moving much faster than the clock speed of industrial companies, for sure. And every once in a while, some new company either enters from the outside or, or somebody leapfrogs and suddenly, wow, it's disruptive. So I do think, um, I think everybody has to realize in the industrial world, there's something out there that's disruptive, 
it's a risk and it's an opportunity and it's moving fast and uh, you know you can't rest on your laurels you you need to know what's going on and understand how it will affect you or you're gonna get run over by it you know I, I uh, was talking to a customer the other day and just kind of joking I said you know companies sometimes think they're best in class but you got to remember every year the class moves forward and if you're best in class five years ago and that's what you're still doing you're probably five years behind the best practice because the practice has moved on so to me that's the key thing is uh, being having a best practice or being best in class that's a momentary thing that might be true right now but let's check back in a year and and then we got to look around and see how far the class has moved that exponential change that we've been talking about really is happening and that's the thing you have to be most aware of and we've seen some of the best best in class companies no longer exist yeah and is that what manufacturers need to be fearful of, is what you've described just there? Yeah, I think uh, for sure. Either either they no longer exist or they're just a fraction of what they used to be in, uh, in some cases. And I think the key thing is, you know, we're at a conference talking about digital. And um, I'm not a person who believes uh, industrial companies have to become digital companies, but they have to leverage digital. They have to leverage it in their products. They have to leverage it in their people with technologies like AR, and they have to leverage it in their processes and their factories and the way they do customer support and so forth. Because if you're not doing that, your competitor is, and, and it's gonna hurt you. Talk a little bit about that, because one of the things, uh, you've acquired so many companies to make yourself a leader in the space, and that's, PTC just didn't do it over overnight. You said, I want this company, and this company, and this company, and that's how we're going to do it. And we understand what, and we, meaning you, you knew what you had to do to make that happen. And you watched the market, and you said, this is how we're going to be a leader in the space. Yeah, I mean, I think in the software industry, acquiring companies is less about the products and more about the expertise. And uh, I look at um, acquiring companies the way uh, the New England Patriots think about getting great football players. Like if I want a winning team, I'm going to have to figure out how to get these really good players on my team. And then, of course, I'm going to have to coach them well. You know, if you get a Tom Brady and, uh, and a Bill Belichick in the football business, you're going to do pretty well. And so that's how I think about it. Again, not, not about acquiring revenue because, frankly, these companies didn't have much revenue but really acquiring the smartest people I can find in pockets and bringing them onto the team and then getting the whole team aligned around a vision of digital transformation that we can then go execute against. Because those are some of the companies. You had Thingworks, you had Vuforia, you've had Exceda. There's been a whole host of companies in there. And, and, and yesterday you mentioned even another company that you've acquired that you just announced. Yeah, we acquired a company called Twinkles, or Twinkle, <laughs> which is a, uh, a European augmented reality uh, company, you know, with, with really the best expertise. The best AR projects I've seen have been done by Twinkle, many times using our Vuforia technology, but again, we went after the talent because uh, I said, wow, those guys are super talented. I'd like to have them on my team. And, and you mentioned also in your keynote about people, processes, and technology. Is that a part of that whole kind of approach when you describe that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, we're mostly acquiring people. Uh, just to put it in perspective, when we acquired uh, ThingWorks, uh, it had about a uh, $2 million revenue run rate. It's 130 now. <laughs> when that. we acquired uh, Vuforia, it had less than two. It's, uh, it's now in the 30s. So we're talking about making big things out of small initial starting points. And so what we're looking for is talent. And then we really just want one process and one strategy. But, you know, it's very hard to just go out and invent everything yourself. You know what I mean? It's no company has a corner on talent. But but when these companies come together, especially small ones doing cutting edge things, then that's like a team you can get and bring them in. So that's the people. And then you're all working in common processes to develop integrated technology that we can then bring to our customers. Then take to the next level about the partnerships. You've yeah. got to have the right partners as in here and yeah. then your partnership with Rockwell. How does that create the dynamics to really take you to the next level even more? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, a, that's a great point actually. I like to think that PTC is a large company, but the world out there is massive. And uh, so how will you how will you on a global basis engage all the customers and all the opportunities 
by yourself. It's it's just I mean, we're a we're a billion and a half dollar company with six and a half thousand employees, and uh, you know there's a hundred thousand companies out there to talk to. So uh, we can't tell each employee you know take uh, take a few thousand of them and knock yourself out. It's not going to work. So we're looking for an ecosystem of partners to kind of magn magnify our presence. And uh, we want partners who resell, and there's many resellers here. We want partners who implement, and there's many system integrators here. And then we want partners who bring uh, technology and expertise into the mix. So uh, if I drill into the Rockwell one, for example, you know, it was clear to PTC that we had something special for factories. But um, we were a little concerned that this special sauce wouldn't show up strong enough in the market because we don't have enough people who understand factories and, and we're not well known for that, you know, frankly. I think we're becoming well known. Oh, but, I was going to say, that's changing, But at the right? time, yeah. So, uh, so we said, you know, we need to find a big brother and we need to find a company who actually has a lot of customers and a lot of credibility and a lot of domain expertise in factory automation. And, and you know, ultimately that led us to Rockwell and it's been a great fit because uh, we've helped Rockwell achieve their vision of the connected enterprise with our ThingWorks, Kepware, and Vuforia technologies. And meanwhile, Rockwell's helped PTC really become a leader in, uh, in this industry 4.0 style uh, smart factory automation. So it's kind of a marriage made in heaven. So when you look at that now, so going forward, will it be that there will be more of a tighter marriage? Will one acquire the other? I mean, when you look <laughs> down the road, will you be acquiring a Rockwell? I mean, yeah. because you're becoming a really big powerhouse in this whole connected world, this trans, this transformative world to which we're in. Who knows what you're going to do? Yeah, I mean, my view is uh, I'm pretty sure PTC isn't going to acquire Rockwell. And I'm actually you pretty never sure. Know. <laughs> and I'm also pretty sure Rockwell's not going to acquire PTC. And and part of the reason I say that is because we can't acquire all these partners. I mean, there are hundreds of partners here. I can't acquire them all. I'm a technology company, so what I'm interested in is acquiring technology talent. And then I need partners. I'll always need partners to bring this stuff to market and create value at the customer site. I can't acquire Accenture and Deloitte and Rockwell and Microsoft and Ansys and, and all these important partners. No, I need them. I need them out there to magnify my presence and I'll just continue to focus on really great technology. Let's talk about skill and, and the next generation and innovation because that's something right now, even when we go out and we look at all of these things and we've just got a few minutes and I know you've got to run, is it so important that we keep inspiring the next generation to be innovative when we do all these things? Yeah, for sure. And in fact, uh, a funny thing about talent here is, you know, PTC just moved its headquarters down to this uh, bustling innovation district here in Boston. And we did that actually for talent. Because in cutting edge fields like IoT and AI and AR and VR and so forth, the next person you hire, say from MIT, is actually going to be the smartest person on the team. So it's like a strange situation where in cutting edge technology, uh, skill is inversely proportional to tenure, okay? That means you need to get the top grads coming out of MIT and Harvard and Northeastern and BU and, and BC and so forth here in Boston. I mean, Boston is university rich with talent. We need to get the top people before they move out to Silicon Valley. And uh, it turns out these people love Boston, but they don't love the suburbs. They don't want to buy a car. They don't want to drive to work. They want to live in an urban area, a bustling urban area, walk to work, meet their friends afterward at a restaurant and so forth. And so, uh, you know, we PTC have made a conscious effort to uh, become a talent magnet, you know, through our location, through our technology, through our branding and recruiting programs, because, uh, you know, I like this high tech stuff and I want to keep doing it. I need that talent to keep winning. Well, that's all our time we have podcasting live and telling you streaming live right here from this amazing center right here at the Extropolis. Great. It's well, been thank, exciting. Thank, thank you, you Peggy. so much great for having to, us. Great to talk to you. Thanks for watching the Peggy Smedley Show. We've been coming to you live from LiveWorks. As always, this is the podcasting voice of IoT and digital transformation. And remember, with great technology comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm.